Yeah, I'm Cliff Arnebeck. I'm an attorney. I've been involved in litigating the integrity of the election process since the uh, year 2000. And uh, with me is Bob Fetrakis, who and we have been partners in that kind of litigation since the 2004 uh, presidential election, almost continuously, including uh, the, uh, in, the, in the two cases, a state case and a federal case, in the 2012 election, which had the effect of uh, protecting that election from a planned uh, shifting of votes of an or a high le level of uh, magnitude. I'm Fetrakis. I'm, uh, I've got a PhD in political science. I'm a professor at Columbus State Community College. I also have a JD. I'm a licensed attorney, and I've written six books. Uh, co-authored with Harvey Wasserman on election integrity. And uh, I also put out freepress.org, a website, as well as the Columbus Free Press that covers these issues. And my name is Lori Grace, and I am an election integrity activist and have worked with uh, Cliff and Bob since 2004. And I also uh, have uh, created and put together the Institute for American Democracy and Election Integrity, where we have outlined various different issues with uh, our elections and how to make them more worthy of our trust. We're facing in this current uh, Democratic primary for the 2016 uh, nomination for uh, uh, president, we're facing an unprecedented uh, series of uh, shifting of votes, electronic shifting of votes, uh, sufficient to change the outcome of that election. Um, it's really unprecedented to have this one after another, after another, after another. And it's critical that this matter be brought to, to the court so that there can be a full investigation, a full uh, examination of this and uh, findings uh, in, in regard to this uh, problem so that it can be corrected before the convention uh, in which the uh, Democratic Party will choose its uh, nominee. And again, uh, I think Cliff's right. Uh, historically, when we looked at 2000, 2004, uh, even 2008, 2012, the common denominators were the Bush family, Rove, uh, Republican elements. What you're seeing now is what we used to call the red shift, the shifting in an impossible and improbable manner uh, from Democratic candidates to Republicans. Now that red shift uh, is operating in the Democratic primary. And in the 11 of these primaries, uh, the numbers are impossible and suggest, of course, election tampering and fraud. And they are showing a consistent pattern, as I understand it, of shifting uh, apparent votes for Sanders to votes for Clinton. Well, I, I would say the key thing uh, is to keep an open mind and investigate everything uh, we say. Uh, because the debate in the United States, at least within the mainstream uh, for-profit media, uh, has been to simply dismiss this. A uh, key thing to keep in mind, uh, which I've said in this video, uh, is we have non-transparent elections in the United States. We're the only democracy, and we're also the last rated democracy, 47 out of 47 long-term democracies by Harvard uh, University. We're the only democracy that allows private partisan for-profit companies to secretly count the ballots with proprietary software. We don't know who's programming. We don't know what they programmed, but when we look at the results, uh, they're not programming anything that's happening uh, in reality, at least in 11 of these uh, uh, primary elections, because people are coming out in exit polls and saying, I voted for Bernie Sanders. And then 12%, uh, 14% of Sanders' vote vanishes in these so-called black boxes. One uh, po point in addition to what Bob talked about is the secrecy, the suppression 
of evidence of fraud being done by the media. So it's not just a secret counting process. They are secreting the evidence that the votes are being manipulated. The exit poll process is something that's developed over many, many years, going back by, to Lou Harris, the, the great uh, former pollster, and uh, continued by Edison Matofsky, now Edison. And this is scientific. This has been, uh, it's a science and an art. They, they've, they, they're using the science of st statistical sampling, and they're using the art of uh, taking into account the human frailties of that process and trying to correct, make every correction on an ongoing basis. But it's all as a professional group seeking the truth. And they seek it and they find it. And when they, but after they do, the media says, well, we're not, if it shows fraud, we want you to erase that part before we report, finalize and report it to the public. This is wrong. The press is supposed to be seeking the truth and reporting the truth to the people of, the, of this country. We the people. And the, they, the, we the people are being denied the truth that the elections have been manipulated. And this is, this is fundamental and, and is critical, and that needs to be litigated. Now, and uh, the exit polls are, are the international gold standard. They're used by our uh, State Department and our Secretary of State to determine election uh, fraud overseas. So when the exit polls tell you uh, something other than the reported results, you're not supposed to adjust the exit polls to match the funny numbers. You're supposed to investigate the funny numbers, 11 out of 26 primaries. Uh, the odds of that happening is, is one in a, a billion. I mean, it's just uh, inconceivable. It's, it's not possible. The uh, lawsuit is designed to uh, demand the release of raw data from states that have had exit polls done by Edison combined in conjunction with the media consortium which is all the television stations that hire Edison to do the exit polling. And they, they hire Edison to do the exit polling because they really enjoy many viewers watching them and they get to sell the ads for very high prices during an election. So it's, it's an exciting uh, kind of um, game, it would be one way to put it. Um, the, uh, the, the, and I say the word game because of the distortion, really. Uh, the uh, thing that we're doing here at the Institute is beginning to take on the job of educating people. Many people don't even know what exit polls were, except recently when there seemed to be some differences showing up between Sanders and, and the shift to Clinton. And it's all of a sudden become in the foreground. And, uh, and things happening in primaries uh, are very foreboding when it comes to what might happen in the fall elections. So we need to really take time with that. And also, so what we're doing is two things. The lawsuit, which will demand the raw data, and then also a, a privately funded, uh, through a nonprofit organization, of course, nonpartisan, a funded exit poll, a series of exit polls in California that will both teach citizens how to have something hands-on about trying to create more truth in their democracy and just be educated in general. I, I personally plan to participate myself and, uh, and hopefully we can create a movement of people who really want transparency in our country and to shift and demand as a nation, huh, let's say, you know, elections that are not run by private partisan corporations, very large corporations. The theory behind the exit poll uh, is that 
you have a large uh, media consortium, ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, CNN, and the Associated Press. Now they've hired uh, a pollster to go out and give them numbers. And when they get these numbers, uh, they well know uh, the unadjusted polls are called the exit polls in other countries. In other countries, they don't have the exit polls, the unadjusted and the adjusted. The exit polls are the exit polls. They're there to detect fraud. Uh, in the United States, the media consortium wants the demographics like of the horse race. How many blacks? How many left-handed Albanians? You know, how many women? <laughs> how many different people voted uh, for what? Uh, and what they want to ignore is what is the obvious election tampering and criminal activity. So they adjust them. They say, look, these are you know, 20-year-old, 15-year-old machines. They're easily hackable. Uh, you can hack them through thumb drives. You can put algorithms in them. You can hack them by remote control from the parking lot. Uh, you can hack them through infrared, uh, Bluetooth. Uh, they're totally vulnerable and uh, nobody knows who's programmed them. But let's pretend nobody in America can hack uh, anything, even though the media consortium runs headlines like CIA director's email hacked today, right? So they run that headline, but they pretend that 20-year-old vulnerable technology, it's <laughs> impossible to hack that, right? So <laughs> in reality, this is a RICO suit. It's, it's organized crime. They have the numbers. They've paid for them. They know somebody's tampering with the boat, but they won't say anything. Instead, they say, however absurd these numbers are, we'll adjust them. They'll still be absurd, but uh, we won't pay any attention you know, to the murdered vote on the floor. The knife's there. The blood's there. We clean it up. That's the adjustment. <laughs> I'd like to uh, address this word adjustment because there are adjustments that are part, part of the normal process of scientific, the art of scientific exit poll. That's not the adjustment that we're talking about. We're talking about, instead of saying adjustment, maybe the word should be unexpurgated. They, they are taking out the obscene from from the exit poll. They're taking out the obscene. It is an obscenity to, to, to steal people's votes and, and, and cast them as, as the, the manipulator wants. That's, that's the adjustment that they're, that they're uh, it's an obscene uh, uh, adjustment to cover that up. Uh, virtually impossible to get a uh, judge to overturn an election. There was a uh, a judicial race where the numbers made no sense whatsoever because of race and demographic when you looked at the results. Uh, and in uh, Franklin County, Ohio, a woman was running for judge, uh, Judge Squire, and she went into great detail to prove it. She brought in experts. She actually got the thermo paper that's virtually impossible to recount. And they spent all this time determining the vote and here's what the judge concluded. While well, you have all this evidence, and it seems to indicate we have a broken system, is that nobody using these machines can really verify who won. It wasn't that she didn't prove massive irregularities and election tampering. The reality is the judge said the system's not designed to actually tell who won. It's not verifiable. So he refused to overturn the election or call for a new election. Well, there, there, there is a remedy. The remedy is a racketeering suit, and that's what, and that's what we're bringing. And the, uh, it is racketeering, and the, because it's crime, uh, the racketeering laws are designed to, to give you uh, help as a prosecutor or as, as, as a attorneys acting in a private attorney general capacity. And uh, so that's, the, that's what needs to be brought. Uh, that's what has not yet been brought. And what's happened now is that this situ the fact situation here has set up a racketeering suit 
that can be filed before the finalization of this election. The finalization of this election is not until the convention, the Democratic convention. And so there's plenty of time to, uh, to issue uh, discovery, to actually uh, subpoena uh, or, or uh, get court orders or uh, ordinary discovery to inspect the ballots. We can go to the actual precincts where we know the shifting occurred. We can, we can inspect and digitally photograph all the ballots in the suspect precincts and count them at leisure. We can, we can make it a pub, have a party and let people not, uh, 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 of both parties, uh, uh, ordinary citizens come around. Oh, can I see that? Can I see this count? Yeah, everybody's welcome. We'll put it on video camera and put it on the internet. The whole world can watch the recount, which shows that votes were shifted electronically because here's the paper ballots and this is, what, uh, this is how they turn out. On the short term, we're looking for people to donate to trustvote.org, which was working in cooperation with the Columbus Institute of Contemporary Journalism. Uh, and we are working together to fund the exit poll for the California primary uh, in 2016 and to add more uh, uh, support uh, as is needed to the lawsuit and we are also going to be seeking we're probably going to need to do some media outreach as well uh, that will require money this is part of creating our new country the way we'd like it to be there's another website that i like to mention it's the, the election justice usa uh, which has been organized specifically for this purpose of the uh, protecting the 2016 Democratic primary. And they will have a website and a donate button, and that, that's a third. They will be using the uh, CICJ, Bob's organization, as a, as a 501c3 uh, fiscal agent, which gives people the assurance that whether it's $5 or $1,000 or $25,000, you will have a, a tax deduction on your income taxes.